on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. John McAfee on why Bitcoin will become the standard for the world. TunnelBear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse the web privately and enjoy a more open and secure internet experience. Try TunnelBear for free by checking out the link in the video description below. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. So let's get into today's news. So just before we get into today's news, let's just deal with this. It says here, Trump pump, Bitcoin price surges following election upset. I've seen this headline on multiple news sites. I don't think it's true. So when we see something like this, what do we do? We verify it or falsify it by going to the Bitcoin charts. So let's have a look here on Bitcoin wisdom. Let me just change my color scheme here to white instead of dark, because then you'll be able to see it easier on the recording. So I'm looking at the Bitcoin chart right now. And if I zoom in a bit, a surge to me, this is not, this is, doesn't look like a surge. So today is the 10th of November, 2016. The election results in the UK were announced yesterday, which would be the 9th of November. And neither today's or yesterday's candles show anything significant. Yesterday's candle has a peak that goes up to what? 740, but that's lower than a week ago when we had the big $745 peak. So I wouldn't exactly call that a surge. Now, if I go out on my Zoom, it neither gets anywhere near the previous surge that went right up to $778 back in 2016. What's that? The sixth month. So that'll be May or June time uh, when it went up to 778 So a surge would be an explosion and upward movement. And looking at the candles for the last two days, doesn't even slightly qualify. So I would call that falsified. It's surprising that the election result hasn't actually affected the Bitcoin price at all, really. It, um, there's quite a bit of volume yesterday, but even then it's not extraordinary. It's uh, even less than the red one there, which was from the 3rd of November, when there was a big crash in the price on that day, which was way before the election, right? That was a 7.6% loss in the Bitcoin price uh, on on a trading volume of what eleven thousand odd bitcoins were trading on that day, and that's all bigger, more significant than yesterday when the election results came out. So, Bitcoin price surges uh, on the back of Donald Trump election? No, absolutely not. So today I turn to crypto coins news for this article entitled John McAfee: Bitcoin quote will become the standard for the world. So here we go. It begins by saying John McAfee, a former programmer for NASA during the 1970s and the creator of the first ever antivirus, entered the packed blockchain money conference room to rousing applause. Now, one of the main reasons I've chosen to cover this article today is because I can actually verify what's in it since I was actually there. I was at the blockchain money conference for last weekend and John McAfee in particular was one of the speakers I was personally really looking forward to to seeing and hearing. So here's a quote from John McAfee. It says, quote, information only has value based on who wants to buy the info and its contents. And then he goes on to say, Bitcoin is the information. The value of information is the information itself. So John's a security expert, right? So that's the lens through which he sees the world. Then the point he began with in his speech was that before Bitcoin, you might as a hacker, you might steal a bunch of information, but you'd have to find a buyer for that information in order to make some money. And the example he gave was, was to say, say you stole the blueprints for a new stealth fighter from the United States government. You'd have a very limited market of buyers for that information in order to turn it into cash you could spend. He then pointed out that Bitcoin is essentially information. And so a Bitcoin is essentially a piece of information. And the reason that makes a difference is because Bitcoin is the value. So hackers can steal the actual value and spend it, which is kind of a first. And that's why he, he emphasized that very point. 
Now moving on to this yellow bit here, it says, this is not a quote now, this is just the article. Uh, it's something that he said in the speech, but it's not it's not quoted. It says, there are 100 million phones that have spyware or a keylogger on them, he continued. And hackers are monitoring these phones. On their systems, they have criteria laid down that says, notify me if someone downloads one of these 20 wallets. And now you can go and download the Mycelium wallet. I'm not sure why that's in the article, because that would be one of the ones that the spyware would be looking for. So specifically how he described this working was that first the hacker has to get the spyware on the phone, which is, he said, simply a case of running a script in the background when a page loads on a porn site. So then the spyware, once it's in there, it will just wait for you to open or download any one of the crypto wallets that it knows about, right, which the hacker has listed. And once it's done that, it goes about taking screenshots. So if it detects you've opened the Mycelium wallet or the Jax wallet or whatever on your phone, it then goes about taking screenshots of what's on your phone's screen in an attempt to get a picture of your private key and then send it back to the attacker. Now, it doesn't have to do this randomly either. If the hacker has studied the way that the app works, typically there's a fairly standardized process that happens when you first install a new mobile wallet. It first asks you to like set a password or to write down your private key or back up a recovery phrase or whatever. And usually that's the second or third screen that is displayed. So these spywares can be programmed to capture like the second or third screen after the app is first opened. And then there's a high degree of accuracy that the hacker will get a picture of the private key. And uh, John asked the question to the crowd and I actually answered it. He says, and what happens if the attacker gets your private key? And I was like, well, you just take all the money out, right? It's as good as having ownership of those funds. So it doesn't matter how secure the actual software is, doesn't matter how well it's written, um, all of that goes out of the window if I leave my private key laying on the table. There's nothing the developers of the Jax wallet, the Mycelium wallet, blockchain.info of any of those guys can do to secure my funds if I surrender the private key. And that was the key, the key, excuse the pun, the key point that John was making. So let's move on to this green bit here. This is another quote. He says, there will come one day when everyone's wallet is emptied. And that's what he said to this gripped packed room, as it says in the article. Then he goes on to say, there will never be a software wallet that is completely secure, not as long as you are using mobile wallets, because they are designed to spy on you, not to provide security. And he said that hardware wallets are the only way. So John gives us these great insights into how hackers think. And many of these hackers are very calculated, more than opportunistic. So once they breach a system, they don't necessarily do anything immediately they patiently prepare their hack. And in this case, it would be, the preparation would be say building a base of 100 million phones that have Bitcoin wallets on them, but the funds are still in there. So then what the hacker would do is stealing all the coins at once means there's no time for anyone to get wind of it. And then to take precautions, you don't know about it until it's too late. So that's why it's beneficial to take it all at once. And then he pointed out that when you think about it fundamentally, phones, smartphones were designed to allow you to capture every kind of information about you and then send that information across the internet, like your location for GPS and satellite navigation, your health information, all these health monitoring apps, pictures, messages, videos, emails. This is exactly what a smartphone is designed to do. So, what was designed to secure Bitcoins? Hardware wallets. They are designed to perform a single function of securing your Bitcoins or, or other, other coins and only let some out when you authorize each individual transaction. So that's why John McAfee in his speech says, look, hardware wallets are really the only way. And trust me, he made a really compelling case if you listen to the whole um, speech. Anyway, moving on to the blue bit. The article says, in explaining that they are sitting, uh, setting up a new mining pool, quote, he said, we rewrote all the software. What's out there is the most insecure piece of software I have ever seen, close quote. So John has this Bitcoin mining operation, 
I think he said it was in North Carolina, right next to a hydroelectric power plant. And as he says here, they have created a completely custom software and computer system to run their operation. And of course, that's all based on John's knowledge as a security expert. And he says, when people bring me ideas for new apps and whatnot, he says, I'm not looking at the business case. His mind automatically goes, oh, I can get in here, I can get in here, and I can get in here. Because if a system isn't secure, then it's doomed eventually, isn't it? So now let me move down to the purple bit here. Here's another quote. He says, I don't agree with the Dow hard fork, close quote. He said that in passing during his presentations to chairs in the room. And yes, he did get some chairs on that. Once the presentation was over, this is the author of the article saying, I found him surrounded by a crowd taking pictures and managed to quickly ask some questions, beginning with why he doesn't agree with the Dow hard fork. Quote, the Dow hard fork reverses time, he said. Time goes only one way, forwards. It can't go backwards. And then he said, quote, it's messing with maths, he continued. Now, I've said this on the Cryptoverse before, but I also don't agree with the Dow hard fork. And my reasoning is that it teaches people that they don't have to bear the consequences of their actions. I think that's very dangerous because when there are no consequences, people don't learn the valuable lessons. If you have no memory of the pain, then your brain won't remind you the next time round. So let's finish this off with the grey bit. It ends by saying McAfee's attendance at the conference is very much yet another sign of the continuing attraction of Bitcoin. The only space where high financiers, members of parliament, pioneers in computing, the intellectual curious and the ordinary man outside who somehow made his way into the conference intermingle with a rich and passionate pastiche that aims to bring cutting edge technology to the failed banking system which almost clogged the world's arteries just eight years ago. Now this is exactly why I have chosen to apply myself to the world of Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. This list of all the different types of people who are paying attention to Bitcoin reveals how money is a fabric that interconnects everything. And I'm someone who wants to alleviate suffering in the world. But rather than flying to Haiti and doing humanitarian work, I see that my personal skills are better applied to transforming the economic system that creates the environment where such suffering emerges. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you like this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. Or even consider supporting me directly by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and sending me a Bitcoin tip to the address on that page. If you would like to support me without actually spending any money, then click on the Steemit logo. Vote for this episode on the Steam Network. That will get me some cryptocurrency without you having to spend a penny. If you would like something physical, then scroll up to the top, click on this store button. That will send you through to the Cryptoversity store where you can buy yourself a t-shirt with the Cryptoversity branding on it. That kind of thing helps me out a lot. Or if you would like more structured information on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains, click on the courses button and you'll be able to buy yourself an online course. That's all for today. I will be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. And until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.